As you probably know, a while back in the UK, NICE set up a committee to look at the guidelines for CFSME, and they came to the conclusion that no change was necessary. In spite of all the controversy, new analysis and new evidence, they felt things were fine. There was a strong reaction from some of the stakeholders, mostly from the patient representative groups. To its credit, NICE listened, disregarded the recommendation and decided that a review was necessary. This is very welcome news and the recent advert for the post of chair for this reviewing committee made it clear that any applicant with a link to CFSME may not be accepted. With luck that means that our concerns over bias is being taken seriously. But we can't afford to be complacent. When the original guidelines were written in 2007, the evidence surrounding CBT and graded exercise as a treatment for MECFS was very poor. That isn't just my opinion. In a report by the Science Media Centre four years later, when the first PACE article was published, Dr Alastair Miller said, although NICE have previously recommended graded exercise and CBT as treatments for MECFS, this was on the basis of somewhat limited evidence in the form of fairly small clinical trials. Remember that this was the person who said that PACE represents the highest grade of clinical evidence. So that shows you just how poor the earlier stuff must have been. Let's be honest, there never has been any good evidence to support the use of CBT or graded exercise. But it is clear from the secret files released from Q, through the efforts of Valerie Elliott Smith, that a core group of ME specialists way back in the 90s had already assumed that MECFS should be treated psychologically. I looked under the guidelines for other conditions that mentioned CBT. I found one sentence suggesting that CBT and mindfulness could help with fatigue in people with MS. And one comment that CBT was not to be offered to patients who had suffered a heart attack. One more sentence under menopause, and that's about it for what I would call biomedical conditions. Under generalised anxiety disorder, there's a standard phrase covering the use of CBT that is repeated a couple of times and other psychological conditions have similar comments. For CFSME in 2007, the committee produced 120 lines in favour of CBT and graded exercise. 120 lines supporting these therapies. The earlier small studies that Dr Miller mentioned only showed that CBT produced a small improvement in answers to questionnaires. They consistently showed that any objective assessment, such as walking tests or using activity monitors, showed CBT was useless. In other words, CBT had no real effect. 120 lines. There is more to my disquiet than that. The guidelines clearly state that CBT and or graded exercise should be offered to people with mild or moderate CFSME because currently these are the interventions for which there is the clearest research evidence of benefit. And yet further down, discussing how to plan this suggests goals for people with severe CFSME sitting up in bed to eat a meal, 
How did this suddenly apply to people with severe ME? Did anyone cross-check any of this? Another entry that bothers me is the statement that sleep management should not include encouraging daytime sleeping and naps. I don't know of any good study into ME that assess the effects of afternoon sleeping. But I do know that people are still being told by ME centres to avoid sleeping during the day. I wonder if they've told the Spanish or Mexicans about that. There are studies on sleeping habits with healthy folk, but people with ME aren't healthy. Or is that at the heart of the problem? Did the committee and the reviewing committee start from the assumption that CFSME was purely a psychological condition? That, physically speaking, patients with ME were healthy, presupposing that CBT had to be effective. In which case, any evidence, no matter how poor and contradictory, could be interpreted to shore up this unsubstantiated belief. Now here's my worry. Who is going to be chosen to join this new review committee? Will the majority be ME specialists? People who already treat patients with CBT? Or health boards who commission such treatments? Will the experts be people who have made their names selling such treatments, unable to comprehend that the evidence is against them and has always been against them? There are 178 organisations listed as stakeholders by NICE who will be consulted. Only a minority of them are patient groups. Many represent those who provide or commission CBT for people with ME. It looks as if many of them are not directly involved in ME. John Peters and I have written a letter to Sir Andrew Dillon expressing our concerns and setting out the steps that we would like to be implemented for this to be a properly unbiased review. There is also a petition which we would encourage you to sign if you share our concerns. Links to both of these are shown below this video. We have to make our voices heard. We have to get this right. We have to demand that the evidence is respected. It has taken far too long to get this situation out into the open and we must insist that any review is fair. Is that too much to ask? 